we have in today an Amiga 600 HD. This is a slightly upgraded model to the A600 that came with a hard drive internally and it was an IDE mechanical hard drive. This one's come in because it has no power. The customer just says it's black screen. So this could be literally anything. We won't know until we take a look. Here is the customer's computer. And as you can see, it has the HD marking over here, which means it will have an internal hard drive or sometimes it's been removed. It could do with retro brighting. But the customer's not paid for that, they just want a full recap and effectively to get it working you can see it says it powers on but does not boot, just black screen. Now black screen and no screen are two different things. With the power and AV cable in, if we turn on, we've got the power light. If we just tap on the input, you can see there's no input whatsoever. So this isn't the Amiga, this is the OSSC generating the background, but there's absolutely no sync. So that's the difference between no screen and black screen. This isn't generating a black screen, there's nothing at all. Taking the lid off, we can see firstly there's no hard drive, so that would be connected here, but we do have the tray for it. There's the floppy, and there's the board completely removed, ready for working on. As getting nothing out on here is very rare, because the CXA and the system in general will usually develop a sync. I've checked the power rails are okay, so next I'm going to suspect some major fault, probably the CPU, which is quite warm, but we're using a oscilloscope to probe around. If we check the kickstart ROM, a signal floating above the 2 volt. So that's a sign of some dead CMOS gate. You can see it's the same everywhere, so it's all this floating signal. Checking on the 68K, we obviously get the same because all the data and address lines are tied. So there's definitely a fail component here. Based on the heat of the 68K, I'm going to swap this out first, I think. I'll just grab one off a donor console. And we take the presumed dead one off and solder the new one back down. With the new CPU on, let's just turn on and see what we get. Yes, there we go, we got the sync signal. There's the white screen, and then it usually comes up. There we go. So hopefully, that's the only problem. The customer's paid for a recap, so let's just do a full recap on the board next. That's all the old caps off, all new ones on with a mixture of ceramics and aluminiums. We'll get this all cleaned up, built and give it some gaming. Now you guys are going to have to suggest another game other than just rough and tumble, because every time I test Amigas, this is the only game I test on. I mean, I must admit I do like it, but it'd be cool to do some tests on another game. Right, let's go, see if I can do something. So it looks like it's working good anyway, all the controls are responsive, I've run the full Amiga test suite and everything passes, and I've powered it up and down several times over the course of the day, so I'm pretty confident this is now working, and I can get it back to the customer so they can enjoy it.